please welcome the Cobra Kai battle. Grab a microphone, they turn on on the bottom. On the very bottom is where the microphones turn. Hola. Oh. Yeah. Nice and loud. On the, there we go. Click the bottom switch and you should be ready to rock. Yep. Hey, Cobra Kai fans. This panel recording was sponsored by those great folks over at 80stees.com. And they've got amazing shirts to show off your fighting spirit. Plus other apparel like hoodies and the iconic Karate Kid headband. And right now you can get 30% off by using coupon code FSCOBRAKAI. Strike first, strike hard, and show your fandom. Visit 80stees.com today. Now, on to the panel. Billy will be here. You got a very enthusiastic crowd right off the bat. Billy will be here shortly, by okay, the way. Yeah. Billy will be here shortly. Okay. Got a very enthusiastic crowd. Do you mind if we get right to the questions? Yeah, let's get right to it. Thank you guys for cool. having us. Thank you. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. Absolutely. All right. Who's first? Woohoo was not. A... Right back here. Let's start with you. Um, this one's for Jacob. Do you have any shows or movies coming out anytime oh, gosh. soon? Gosh, me and Shiloh did a little animated show together called oh. Bat Wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got Bat Wheels on HBO Max. It's an animated uh, Batman universe show, and, and Jacob plays the Batmobile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shola plays the Mr. Freeze's ice cream truck. <laughs> okay, we've got one right here. Down here, wow. Real fans. Vita. Um, did you guys have to learn karate or did you already know it? It's all CGI. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, we had, we had to learn karate. I've been punched by him many times. Um, but yeah, it was super fun. Whenever we're not uh, filming, usually we're training. Great question. Yep, right down here's another one. Uh, this question is for Mr. Cove. So my question about your character is that at this point, I feel like he has not grown as the other characters have. He just kind of continues to be this villain no matter what is happening around him. <laughs> and, and it's amazing, and uh, we love it. The question is, do you feel like you want your character to grow or do you just want to continue with that villainous? <laughs> Darling, are you up to date on the season five? Right. <laughs> there are a few changes and manipulations and emotional trauma in season five. Not only is he framed in season five and doesn't deserve to be in jail, which could cause anybody, <laughs> anybody emotional trauma, but they bring back all his events and friends from years ago. And he cries and he breaks down a lot. And then he tells the psychologist that he's really just so vulnerable. And he, he then steals her pass. And then he leaves, gets killed by some jello. And then he leaves the jail. So I think he has made a few transitions in life. He's a better liar now. But, but, but to be perfectly honest, when I signed on to do this show, I wasn't interested in playing John Kreese the way he was in Karate Kid 1, 2, and 3. I wanted some vulnerability, some texture emotionally. And that's what I told the writers the very first time. And they did it slowly, in the flashbacks especially. So he, it is not every time if someone says, we love you, you're the best villain, I honestly don't think of myself as a villain. I just think of myself as misunderstood. <laughs> yeah, nice. Question right down the middle, right here. Down the middle. Hi, my name's Amy. This is kind of for all three of you. I was kind of hoping William would be here so he could answer, but I'll kind of direct it towards Martin. Uh, I grew up with the original, not trying to date myself, but I want to know what it means to you to bring this legacy and this franchise and your characters to a new generation, because I was able to share it with my kids. You wanna... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always tell people, especially at autograph shows, they say, "Why do you, I say? Why do you think the show is so popular?" And they tell, all tell me the same thing: that the kids would watch Cobra Kai, the parents would say, "Would you like to see these movies we grow up on at your age?" And the kids say, no, no, we're happy with Cobra Kai. <laughs> then the season ends, 
and they go to the parents and they say, well, we'd really like to see those movies you talked about regarding the background of these characters. They all watch the movies together. Then the parents watch Cobra Kai, and then the entire event becomes a family event. So everybody all over the world, and I've this year been to, you know, all over the place, all of us have, and, and uh, it's all the same thing. It's a family show, despite some of the progressive things that go on, but everybody loves getting around the TV with your family and watching like the Ed Sullivan show. And it doesn't happen much. It doesn't happen on Netflix that much and probably doesn't happen on TV, you know, unless you're watching a classic movie for Christmas like It's a Wonderful Life or A Christmas Carol or something like that. But, you know, we've created this show that's all about you, you know, and the family and especially holiday time. Cobra Kai never dies. Question way in the back. Yeah, down we the got middle. one all the way back here. All the way back. Okay, for starters, I just wanted to be known that I think Johnny should have won back in 84. <laughs> that, that kick was totally illegal. Yeah. And uh, my second part of this is for the younger guys, the new Cobra Kai group, did you guys know of Karate Kid and the history of the movies before jumping into Cobra Kai? I think both Jacob and I had knowledge of the movies, and, and Jacob had seen them. I had seen them super, super early on and, and honestly hadn't revisited uh, the movies until booking the project. But I don't think we had any knowledge of the world view, like how much, how pivotal the Karate Kid franchise was uh, at the time, and even how many people still like harnessed feelings for that movie uh, until the first season came out. Mm -hmm. And all those people hated on the trailer because they were like, they're ruining Cobra Kai. And I was like, oh wait, people really care? Like, they, they, <laughs> they're really mad about this. And then the first season came out and I, and I think we, we did a great job, you know. Yeah. It, and that's, that was my extent of the knowledge. I had seen the Jaden Smith one, I will say. But I don't like saying that because people roast me. No, they really don't talk about the fourth one. <laughs> there, there was a four disc set that came out. And I know because I, I had gotten a few and it had the next Karate Kid on it. And all throughout the video stores, nobody was buying the four disc set. I remember talking to the video department of Columbia and asking them, oh, can you send me 10? She said, we'll send you as many as you want. They're not selling. And, and he said, we've got a good idea. And I said, what's your idea? He said, we're gonna sell a three box set and pull out this next Karate Kid. And that's what Columbia Video did. And the three went crazy. They sold out. <laughs> so it's all about the quality and you know how many great movies can create sequels. Very few. Godfather did it. Rocky did it. You know, we did it. And Cobra Kai has a certain kind of you know, we, we need to follow, and thank God our writers write so well for these guys. And they, they fight like, you know, Bruce Lee. I mean, I've seen them just fight, you know, and, um, and they keep up the heritage of the movie, you know, the young actors, I find. And um, it's just very exciting that the, the legacy and the heritage of the show will keep on going as long as the work is great and the acting's good and we're not playing with a bunch of prima donnas that we all know exist in Hollywood television, you know? Great question. Yep. You have a question right over on this side of the room. Um, okay, so my question is, since oh, we were introduced to um, Miguel's dad this season, and I was wondering we would see, if we would see more of him in the next seasons? That's a great question, my dad. dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not too sure. I think, you know, where things were left off, I feel like we kind of established that... He sucks. Yeah, the, that, <laughs> that Vanessa was right all along, that maybe I didn't need to embark on this big old journey. But, you know, the, the world of, of, of Cobra Kai is endless. There's, there's room for characters to come back. We, he might have we another visit. dad. Yeah, who knows? I, I, I met your dad when I was escaping the prison. <laughs> He had no connections whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
let's head to the back corner. Yep. We are back here. Hi. Um, season five has been my favorite season so far. What's been your favorite season and why? Jacob? Oh, man. I think, um, I think season one or two are probably my favorites. Um, I really, really liked the school fight um, in season two. Um, that was by far one of the most fun times I've ever had filming. And wasn't season two the Coyote Creek? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was also a really hard fight, but very fun. So one, one or two. I liked four a lot too, though. Winning is fun. <laughs> We're gonna pop over to this side of the room and get a bunch of questions over here. This question's for Jacob. Um, well, I, can I give this to him? He's got an envelope for you. Is it, yeah, is it money? It could be, it's very thick. What's your name? Cameron, everybody welcome Cameron. Cameron, there you go, Cameron, he's got something for you. There you go, Cameron. Thank you. Don't read it, it's for Peyton. You're just, you're just the we'll middleman, okay? <laughs> just to thank you. Let's head over here. It. That okay. was your question? Will you give this to Peyton? Yeah, sorry. No. <laughs> That's my answer. Yeah, question right over here on the far end near the door. Um, so uh, this question is for all of you. Um, as like real people, what dojo do you think you'd be in? <laughs> what, Marty, what dojo would you be in? As a real person. As a real person. I would be in Bruce Lee's dojo. <laughs> Just so you all know that we worked with Pat Johnson, who was a man who used to travel with Chuck Norris in the tournament scene in the 60s and 70s. He was the stunt coordinator as well as the referee in the movie at the end, the red shirt and the black mustache in all the movies, in Karate Kid 1. And he was asked to play the bad guy in many Bruce Lee movies. And he didn't want to. And ultimately, Chuck did, did a couple. And the most mild-mannered fellow, and he didn't want to open up a dojo, but he was a killer. He was just, he taught us. He taught Miyagi and, and um, Ralph separately, taught the Cobra Kai separately, taught me separately to create the mystique. And the fascinating thing was he was such an incredible martial artist. The ites that I say, my ki and the stances are all taken from him. And um, I always wanted him to have his own dojo because he was a mild-mannered man. He wasn't like John Kreese. And you learned so much from him by working with him. And he was calm. If you didn't do it, he'd get pissed. <laughs> but he was calm and letting you know. And, you know, most senseis, since the Karate Kid, they were all overt. They all think, you know, mercy is for the weak here and on the streets. I'd like to be a mild-mannered, you know, sensei and learn from him. I'd go right back to class three days a week, like you guys. Pat Johnson Dojo. Yeah, I'd, I'd go uh, wherever Johnny's at, I think. That's my answer. <laughs> Aw. That's sweet. <laughs> Yeah, damn, how do I follow that? I'll, I go wherever Daniel's at. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Keep hanging in there. We got some more questions. Uh, this question is for Martin. Um, you just mentioned that you would uh, probably follow a, a, a calm sensei, I, I believe. What sort of inspiration um, did you have when you went into the original Karate Kid, as well as moving into Cobra Kai to play that part. Well, the the backstory I didn't create very many very much of a backstory. It, it was interesting because I thought of John Kreese as just another heavy. You know, I had no idea walking into that part during a hiatus from Cagney and Lacey was going to be that effective. You know, it just came, and, and John Avelson would say to me, "I don't want the Marty Cove charm. I don't want the smile. I just want." Death. That was the direction. And I got maybe two directions from him. Otherwise, the script was so well, it was so well um, put together that everything worked. You know, 
everything works on our show. There's nobody that sticks out that we, it's the chemistry of all of us and the chemistry that worked. But to be perfectly honest, the dialogue sent me into a very good acting place with the character. Because wax off, wax on, paint the, you know, painting the fence, the, the force be with you, you know, play it again, Sam. All these lines that come from great movies usually come from great scripts of those movies. Those movies aren't great movies unless the written word is there. So somehow the written word that Robert came and wrote formulated my character. And it was very easy to get into that, you know, it, you know, mercies for the week. Uh, Head on up. Come on. I think. Everyone, welcome oh. Johnny William Zababaga. Johnny Lawrence. And he's got a special performance for y'all. He's going to do a kata. Everybody, everybody here is chipped in for you to open up your own dojo. They were all given five dollars, and you can open up your own dojo. The switch is on the bottom. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Check one, two, three, and let's go all the way to the back of the room. Get the other side of this Hello, place. Hello, we're back here. Back there. Get a couple questions back there. Then we'll come back up. Uh, my first one would be to you, Sensei Crease. Uh, it's a two-parter. If you had to take the two young bulls to your right, paired up with. Robbie and Dimitri against your original stable, who would win? And part two to my question would go to the whole panel. Uh, will anybody confirm or deny the potential of Dutch being Tori's father? You got me sweating, man. Come on. <laughs> well, the first one's an easy answer. There's only one Johnny Lawrence. And, and there's only one winner. As much as I adore um, our warriors to my right, uh, you can't improve upon, as you said earlier, that crane kick was a joke. <laughs> the man to my right is the Karate Kid. <laughs> and how, how would he fare against my other two great warriors here? Johnny would be triumphant. He is the Karate Kid. I disagree. No, 18, 18 year old Billy is... would kick our asses 100%. What about right now? No. <laughs> no, after 18, no, no after way. 18, no, 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 after 18, yeah. I don't know, I pass the torch to these guys. I say, uh, you know, they got the new stuff, they got the new juice. Um, they don't have the crane kick, that, that's for sure. So. You have to defend against that. Um, is Dutch Dory's, Tory's father? Um, I you know. <laughs> what am I going to say? Not, I'm not going to say anything here, but um, <laughs> anything's possible. <laughs> okay, we've got another one back here. Let's stay back there. What's your, what's your name? My name is Michael DeLuise. This question is for Jacob. Was that mohawk real? Why do you sound so skeptical, bro? Um, yeah, it was real. I grew out, grew it out myself. They buzz the sides, bleach the top, throw whatever color the writers tell them to in there. Um, yeah, it's all my real hair. It takes about an hour to put up and like two and a half bottles of hairspray. You should get one. One more from that side of the room yep. and then we'll move over here. We got here. another one here. Hey, uh... Question for the whole panel. So, personally, I was a very awkward kid growing up. <laughs> and uh, martial arts actually was a, uh, a big confidence builder for me. So, my question to all of you is, is there any character on the show that you personally identify with? <laughs> I think I... At the time of the start of the show, I think I identified with a lot of the young cast. Um, yeah, especially Jacob's character, the mute character. Um, no, I, I think I, I think as a youth, you a lot of people tend to have. I myself, this guy was definitely an awkward kid. Um, but but there's something so earnest and so honest about 
these kids and their navigation and trying to feel accepted and, and seeking validation through like father figures and whatnot, I think I could definitely relate to that. Um, and now five years in, I'm like, now I just want to shake them all. Now I just want to be like, just talk to each other. Why, can, why, why must you fight? Um, but, but, at the, but at the beginning, I, I, yeah, I, I felt pretty connected with Miguel for sure. I identify with Bert the most. <laughs> He's like a little me in real life. Um, you know, we all identify with these characters. I mean, I think what's great about the show is that we're all, there's a piece of each of us and why you, all of us were cast as these parts to play these characters. There's definitely a lot of Johnny and me or me and Johnny and these guys, you know, we all bring our heart and our kind of soul experiences in life to it. Um, so I think we're all pretty, there's not too far off. I mean, he actually, Marty actually is Sensei Kreese. Like he's the real, yeah, I don't even know if there's Marty anymore. <laughs> Nobody knows that Sensei Kreese cries at supermarket openings. <laughs> that is a true sign of how vulnerable he is. You know, but there are a lot of parts I definitely, that we, it's like well, last season, last year we did two seasons, and there's a lot of anger and hostility that carried on into my personality. I destroyed three relationships with three women, and um, no, but... Uh, <laughs> Same woman, but uh, <laughs> but you know these things come up and you, you diffuse into the character and you know it's it's one of those things and it's easy to diffuse into John Kreese because he's angry and a lot of us are angry and there's so much to be angry about out there, you know. So yeah, you, you, you get close and then See, you, uh, he is Kreese. He's he's trying to get himself out of it. All right, listen, I'm leaving now. I'm, I'm got, I've got some supermarket opening over. I have to go. <laughs> We're gonna flip all the way to the other side of the stage and get some folks right down front. Right, here's a question. Okay, so this is for everyone. Um, what were some of your favorite scenes to like film over the like, period of the whole show? Getting to film with Billy at that first season where he's breaking down the events of the Karate Kid 1, um, that was really fun. I hadn't seen the movie at that point, so I was learning it. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm he, just learned kidding. It, he learned it through the dialogue. I was like, oh, There's really? A movie? Wait, really? Um, no, uh, all of those season one, you know, uh, Johnny Miguel moments were, were a lot of my favorites. Yeah, I like, I like the, the, the um, first time we, that we met, and I liked um, beating those kids up in the parking lot. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think all the time, I think we all love playing. The, the fighting is fun, the energy is fun, but I think when we get to play the humanity of these characters and show them as real people, um, that's, I think that's, those are the things I, I elevate to all those in the whole series. So anything that's got some heart. And, you know, anything kind of funny, even the Coors Banquet doesn't hurt. <laughs> you know. the, 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 there's two sequences. When I come on to the gym the very first time, and I have that line, smoking the cigar, the, the real story's only just begun. That whole moment between the two of us, it's been 30 years since we've been on film and been together as the characters, and it was just so rich. And then the fight in scene three where we go through the window and we finally go at it together, and you know, and, and then when you walk up and you, you nod to Ralph to completely paralyze me, you know, <laughs> it was just, you know, it was a culmination of all those years of Johnny Lawrence and Sensei Kreese being together in the history, which is so easy to act because there's so much history. So those are my favorite scenes, really. And we actually have some over here. Did you guys have answers for that, or we're ready to roll on? I liked killing Brooks. <laughs> all right, we have some questions over here. Let's get all three of these. Um, this is for Jacob. Um, are you going to have the mohawk in the new season? I can't tell you that. But I mean, probably. I have one at the, at the end of last season. I mean, I hope so. I think it'd be pretty cool. Maybe have a new color. Okay. And your question? Um, this is a question for all of you. Would you um, who was the first person you guys met on set? The first person I met was Sholo. And I met him uh, right before we ate lunch together. With my mom. Yep. He's first it was a play date. It was a play date, yeah, yeah. It was... 
Billy was the first person I met. I met I met Billy in the audition room. Yeah, I, I tested with him. He yelled at me, and they said, "Oh, this yeah, works." Yeah, didn't know what was going on. I'm like, "Quiet!" It was the first time we ever did quiet. He's like, "What the hell? Are you gonna do it that way?" I was like, "Oh, I have to scream too." Okay. Was, was he the Was he the best one? Um, there was a, <laughs> he was the like, best no, one available. <laughs> No, it was instant with Sholo. We knew it right away. The chemistry was great. We did these chemistry reads. We don't really call them auditions. We bring people in. And we read with the various uh, Robbies and, and um, Miguel's and Ralph read with Sam's. And um, yeah, and uh, we just knew. So uh, I think we did right. I think it was the right call. And uh, definitely that was my first meeting. And then I knew him from a while back. And I remember working with you on the first time when you came with the lip. I mean, it was... When I read that, I, did, I hated it. I was like, you, no, you hated that scene. I, I hated it. I'm like, come on, man. I don't want to say he's on the spectrum and all this stuff. Like, for, I got to say this stuff. They're like, just go for it. Just commit to it. And it was so painful to do. And he just played it so well. Now that I know him, I would do it a million times. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's funny. I remember filming that scene thinking, like, man, he's really into this. He's a dick. <laughs> Wait, why is he improvising? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> but those things turn out to be so that some of the things that they write that I resist so much turn out to be some of the funniest and the best <laughs> stuff. But when you're playing it, it hurts. It's like, what? I can't believe you're doing this, you know? When he was beating the. the when you were beating that. that yeah, Rux. I kept thinking like it was steak, you know? <laughs> like fighters, fighters hit steak, you know, they hit yeah. me. And I just. And you were just so into it. It was amazing. <laughs> That's when I looked at you, you looked at me, and what are we? Have here. <laughs> what, what is this guy? You know, he's the next karate killer, serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get one more from this group, and then we're going to move on. Hi, I'm Gianna. I was just wondering, what was your favorite karate moves to do? <laughs> um, I think instinctually, or like right off the bat, I really like the axe kick. Four strike. Forward strike. I, I, I like the axe kick. Bring it up, boom. Bring it down, like an axe. Um, I liked it when I did the the fight with um, with Crease in the dojo. What I like about when we did Karate Kid, we did Kong Sudo only. It was Korean, very straightforward karate. Now in this one, we mix in all kinds of stuff. We have all kinds of different things. So we are really innovative. It's more modern. A lot of MMA, a lot of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I happened to learn a move that was a C-lot, uh, which is a style called C-lot from the ground where I had to practice it a million times to kick the cigar out of his mouth. You know, so that was like my favorite thing because I like learning new things. My favorite kicks are like, I like spinning crescent kicks and uh, inside kick kicks are good. Um, spinning heel kicks, I like those types of things. Um, but I like the sea lot kick from the ground which is taught to us by the stunt people. Great questions, kids. You guys are awesome. Yeah, you guys all rock. Let's head to the wall on the other side. So my question is for all of you. Do you think in the next season you will, any of you will learn how to dial 911 when something happens? <laughs> Maybe before someone gets kicked off a balcony? <laughs> Probably, with, oh, no, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> no, no, I can't say that. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> okay. uh. Sorry, Billy's being naughty. Right down the middle. Hi. This is for all of you. Um, I'm curious about uh, where did the name Eagle Fang came from? And did you have any other ideas? Or how well, that, was that decided to, yes, to use well, the name? Yes, well, I was in the backyard and I saw an eagle actually <laughs> flying over my house with the fangs, you know, because the eagles have fangs. Um, no, what happened was the, the writers, the crazy guys, John, Josh, and Hayden, who created the show, they were telling me that Johnny's going to have a new dojo and they're coming up with a name for it. And I said, okay, and you know, and they call one day and said, okay, sit down, it's Eagle Fang. I'm like, can't be any stupider. Like, <laughs> Eagle Fang. And uh, they're like, trust me, it's going to catch on. It's going to catch on. Um, but they were right, so it was pretty funny. So that came from the, it came from them in a writer's room kicking word around. I think Hayden came up with that one. Uh, Hayden Schlossberg, one of the three creators of the show. Um, yeah, and do I don't know. Do we have any outside? Eagle Fangs in the house? we got the kids over there, Eagle Fang. I mean, I think it was so funny when they're like, you know, eagles have, you know, talon, talon talons. And they're like, no, they don't have talent. It's instinct. <laughs> 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 like, no, not talent, talons. 
So they knew what they were doing with that. It's pretty funny. I'm not crazy about the style. of. of I, I'm, I'm kind of like trying to figure it out still because Eagle Fang is like kind of Cobra Kai light a little bit, like the conscience, which is kind of where Johnny was taking Cobra Kai. So he's kind of, now he's got his toe dipped in Miyagi dough as he's painting things. So we're going to pull that back. <laughs> get him back, get this guy back on track. No more paintings and no more, no more car waxings. Um, you know. Right. I agree. I think you pull it all back. I think you should come back to the dojo and kill. <laughs> See? <laughs> Question right behind you. Uh-huh. How are you guys doing? I'm curious. Do you guys ever do any kind of behind the scenes, just sparring to see, just have fun sparring? Kind of like... Uh, as you brought up Rocky and Apollo Creed, you know, they did their own little boxing thing just to see who's the best that you guys ever did. These guys are so. always horsing around, throwing kicks and bringing each other down and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I beat up Tanner all the time. He's great. Oh, yeah, well, anybody could. Tanner's a <laughs> Just kidding. Tanner should have been here. He could have defended himself. <laughs> yeah, so now you guys all think he sucks. You, you and Tanner did do a... No, I did beat Tanner. Yeah. You, I, I don't... I don't like sparring like that <laughs> they always get too cra- they're too rowdy especially <laughs> jacob i can't do anything with jacob anymore ah. uh, yeah he, he's too crazy but i think we'd like to eventually maybe years from now i think at the end of the show i want to do a tournament tournament between oh, all of us tournament? an actual tournament oh, that's good. i think that well, not you guys you guys would beat us yeah. no we'd just be the refs yeah. oh yeah that would be sick yeah. I want Marty to be my ref the whole time. He's just not going to stop the fight. (laughs) (laughs) Marty be like, no, keep going. He's still breathing. (laughs) Still breathing. Yeah, he'll get up. He'll get up soon. (laughs) He'll get up. Yeah, you want to go for lunch? Yeah, he'll get up. Uh, Walk it off. But but to be perfectly honest, you know, I've been worked out. I've worked out with Stallone, you know, and and, and Carl for Rocky II and, you know, three, I think. And they don't really spar you know, they, they, it's business, you know, and I got in the ring with Sly and he nailed me and, uh, you know, and we were just playing. But so you don't, you don't really do it in boxing. They don't do it. I think in karate we can have fun and, you know, spinning, crescent kick and you miss the guy because you're supposed to miss him in the movies anyway. But when you spar, you know, for real. In reality, we're not going to do that while we're filming anyway, because anybody can get hurt, you know, and just one slip up from a black eye or somebody twisting something. But um, off screen, you know, but they still do it. They still horse around. Take it to the limits, yeah. yeah. Question right here. Um, obviously, you guys do a lot of fight scenes for Cobra Kai. I was wondering, is there anything that's happened accidental during filming that made it into the show? I don't think so. I think that's the magic of editing. All the mistakes was, get edited out. There was one take uh, during the school fight where I'm fighting Tanner on the upstairs on the second floor, and I like charge at him and put my foot up against the railing. And on all the takes, like I was fine. I was able to put my foot on the railing and then go to kick him. But on one of them, I my foot hit the railing and the railing just broke. And I think that's the one that made it. Oh, really? Yeah. But it wasn't supposed to happen. We were, we were at an actual school. They were like, what? You can't. Okay. The only one. Another one down the middle. So as a child of the 80s, I want to thank you for bringing back Karate Kid and Cobra Kai. It's been a really joy to see you guys in the last five seasons. My question, mainly for the older gentleman. What is your favorite past project? And other than Cobra Kai and Karate Kid, what do you have coming up next? You talking to, are you talking to me? I missed that part. Oh, yes. Well, like, you and I might be the same age there. Well, I don't know. 39? <laughs> um, what's my favorite past project? I, I don't know. I mean, I did a movie in the 80s called Back to School that was, yeah. It was with Rodney Dangerfield. It was one of the, it was the most fun I ever had doing anything on film, really. And if I had to do something every day, like Groundhog Day, it would be doing Back to School. It was just a total, it was just the fun energy it was in the movie behind the scenes. Um, what I have next, I've got things in the pipeline, but I'm not talking about them right now, and um, we'll see. Right now I'm enjoying my family. That's what I'm doing. We've been away for a long time. This is my first year in four years I got to do trick-or-treating with my kids. I turned down some work so I can stay home and have my daughter's ninth birthday and watch her in her own play. So right now I'm being daddy, and it's been a great, great time off. So. 
That's my job. I'm producing two kids. Um, so, Over to the wall. So this is for uh, all of you. Uh, what was the hardest scene for you to uh, uh, act? Not one of them, right? <laughs> I have a hard one. I have a hard one. It was when I, because I didn't know it was coming. Like after we did season one and Johnny opens a dojo and then Chris peeks his head in at the end, I don't know what's coming. The writers didn't really tell me exactly what's happening. I certainly didn't know by the end of the season he was going to take the dojo over. Or was that episode, was that season three? Does it arc to there? Yeah, so season three. But I mean, when I read that and I'm like, wait, so I, uh, so he takes the dojo and I'm, I'm, I'm walking out, everything that we built, I felt like we built this thing and now it's, like that was actually a hard scene to play emotionally. Yeah. The hardest scenes <clears throat> I find is so many times I invite him back to the dojo, <clears throat> that scene in the bar that we, we did. And, and even when I, I'm in jail and you know, he tells me, what you, what's that line you look at me and t you tell me, I hope you die here, or something like that? With Ralph, Ralph leaves and then you say, I hope you rot in here or something. Those scenes, because I always look at, at Johnny Lawrence as a son I didn't have, they're very painful for me as an actor. They're very painful for the character, very painful. And, um, you know, maybe in what's up and coming, he'll return. But what's tough for me is the fact that here's someone that, you know, I always thought should be the champion, and it's not working out for me. And it's very painful for me as a human being, especially coming out of jail right now, you know. And, What's, what's one, what am I waiting for, a manhunt, you know? So it's quite interesting in that respect. And we're gonna go big down the middle again. We got time for about four more questions. Is that good? Good. Hello, big fan of your show. My husband has a question for you. <laughs> so what, what is it like uh, for jo the character of Johnny Lawrence to go from being this hated villain to like almost like an everyman character that we can all root for and truly get behind because he's flawed, but he has so many good qualities that he's just generally a good guy that you really want to get behind and see succeed. It just seems like it's it's like a redemption story at its best. Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate that. that everybody's gone on this ride with me as an actor and with the character. I, I carried the torch of being the you know the quintessential '80s asshole for thirty something years. <laughs> So I had many fathers walking up to these tables at shows going, this to his son, this is the biggest asshole in the whole world. Just wanted to show my son who you are, bye. You know? <laughs> you know? It's all water so under the bridge. All, no, but I mean, listen, it was fine, though. I mean, there was, it, was, it wasn't really so bad. I mean, the thing that, that, that was good about Johnny, like if Johnny, at the end of The Karate Kid, um, you know, it took the crane kick and then chased Daniel down with a baseball bat or something, and he's unredemptive. But he had that moment at the end. You could see when he's looking at Crease, he doesn't want to sweep his leg. And then he goes out, he loses, and he hands him the trophy and says, Good match, Lewis, so you're all right. Which is the part, the only part of the whole Karate Kid script that I go, Oh, that's me. Like all the rest of it was like this, you know, you know, I didn't know karate. I never rode a motorcycle. I did commercials before that. I was like, did milk commercials and dial soap commercials. You could find them all on YouTube, showbiz pizza, you know? And all of a sudden I'm reading this guy. So the one th character, one part of the character I found was this moment at the end and that's the seed so i actually reverse engineered the character from that knowing that that's the moment where i get to really be put i get to be that's the awakening of johnny and then i get to kind of be as tough and mean as badass as i want the whole first part so for me he was never a bad guy i never saw him as a villain i never saw him even when i watched it took me years probably still even a little bit now to watch the karate kid and not like can you imagine like I'm the only one that took that kick. So like, I could never watch it. I always felt the emotion of that. I never got behind Daniel character. Like, I'm like, oh man. So it's been, uh, it's been a long time of, uh, you know, that brewing in culture. And then I did this music video called Sweep the Leg, which was like revisiting the ko Karate Kid stuff. And then the stint on How I Met Your Mother and all these things kind of along the way where Johnny was becoming kind of, you know, every man type of thing and then then the show came around. These guys, you know, they did it right. And that was my thing is that if I play this guy, you know, I want to play uh, mini levels and all that stuff. So it's been great. It's been a great ride. It's, it's neat. It's, what I love the most really truly is like I love kids. I love working with kids. I like encouraging kids and, and inspiring them to, 
you know, I was a kid. I remember being 10 years old and having a dream to do what I'm doing now. You know, and I remember how out of reach that seemed. And th but it's not. So I like to inspire kids and stuff. So um, I, I don't know. And so it's cool that I get to have a platform now where kids are going, Johnny's cool instead of, oh, he's that asshole. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, hey, that's a long Got time for three more questions. We'll head over here. All right. My question is for uh, Jacob. Did Hawk's parents ever find out about his tattoos? <laughs> and they know and they never will. Okay. We're, we're, we're still going strong with the secret. Okay. And a question down the middle right here. Hi, uh, my question's for Billy and Martin. Um, the one legacy character that can't be in Cobra Kai is Miyagi. And so I was wondering if you guys had any stories about working with Pat Morita on the original film. I met Pat walking in rehearsal. So after we, after we got cast, I, they cast me and Ralph. Well, Ralph was cast. And it was for day one of rehearsals in the back, uh, back lot of Columbia Pictures, which is Warner Brothers now in, in Burbank, California. And that's when I met Pat Morita. And he kind of walked out. And Ralph, Pat, and I were walking down to this soundstage where we were going to train together. And I watched him on uh, Happy Days growing up. So I was like uh, in awe of him. And I loved him. And was a fan, and so I told him, I said, you know, this is my first movie, you know, I've never done anything like this. In fact, when I auditioned for Karate Kid, I only auditioned for one scene like you did. One scene, and it's a movie, and then they gave me the part. After that, I didn't know how they can trust that I'm going to play the rest of this. <laughs> I knew I knew this one scene, yeah. So now I'm walking the back, I said to Pat, I said, if you see anything I could do different, anything, just anything you can give me, just don't be afraid to tap me on the shoulder and say, give me a little advice. And so uh, when we were doing the skeleton fight scene where uh, the, when Daniel gets the good uh, beatdown that he deserved after soaking Johnny Lawrence in a shower stall, minding his own business, rolling a doobie. Um, <laughs> kids, uh, <laughs> this is getting past your bedtime. But uh, anyway, we were doing the scene where we run up and, and uh, you know, you couldn't leave well enough alone, could you, little twerp? No, you had to push it, now you're going to pay. And when we were doing that, it was like 12 o'clock, 1 in the morning. And um, on the rehearsals, just instinctively, I wasn't going for it. I was just like, I'm going to wait for the camera, you know. And um, we rehearsed this over and over again. And Pat tapped me on the shoulder. He goes, BZ, BZ, BZ. He goes, listen, man. He goes, when you go out there, he goes, in your rehearsals, you got to give 110%, man, 110%. That way the camera's rolling. It's like bread and butter, baby. It's like bread and butter. So I went out, and I gave 100%. And that's why that, that seems so jacked and so amped, because he, he set me free to do that, you know? And that was great. Plus, he was a dear, dear guy, a dear friend. Yeah, it was awesome. And uh, we were friends for all the way up to when he passed. We talked every Christmas, every Thanksgiving. And when we did the original tour for Karate Kid, the press tour, I was 18 years old, getting out of planes and limousines, going from city to city, right out of high school, going, you know, and he would call me. He was in one city. I'd be in another city. and. Hey, BZ, how you doing? How you holding up? How you holding up? He was great. He's a great mentor. He's a great guy. And he is in Cobra Kai. He is in the spirit of, of Miyagi, and Pierre is, is for sure a part of the magic of the show. I, I met Pat when um, um, it was like the fourth audition, and it was for the head of the studio. First was John Avelson, then Jerry Weintraub, and then Pat, and... Um, he was terrific, you know. I, I had to really pump myself up. It was the mercy for the weak. Here and on the street, somebody confronts you where I'm walking in the aisles of the dojo. And I had to get really pumped up with anger. And it was easy to do in the other previous auditions because I, could, I abused everyone. And I would say, you know, you know, we, it's a long story, but I abused John Avelson and I abused Jerry Weintraub to get up to that place of mercy is for the weak here and, and I berated them and I made them and said they were assholes and I really called them terrible things and they loved it and then I couldn't do that for the head of the studio because he wasn't there so it was just Pat and John Appleson's assistant with the camera over his shoulder and I was doing that scene you know with, uh, with, with him and it was a different scene it was the scene where you know um, but this is knitting, not a knitting class you know, you don't show up and it's open season on him and you. And he was so responsive. You know, he was so good and so real. And this is, I'm just following him around the room and they're shooting the movie already. And he's gotten the part. And it was such a giving benefit to me because he was now Miyagi. 
and I was still, you're still a little nervous. And I was, you know, right in that moment there, and he just accepted, and we did it two times and three times, and I can't say, would I have gotten the part without that? But the bottom line is he was so giving as an actor to another actor, and I never forgot it, never forgot the moment. And it's like Billy's story, you know? It's just a giving guy and he died way too soon, you know? One final question, let's wrap this up. Hi, um, this one is for um, William and Martin. Uh, so, how many times has the idea for a spin-off Karate Kid movie uh, sequel, how many times has that been pitched to you for a spin-off by other writers, but you've turned them down? Well, I mean, I, there was many people that came over with ideas about it. I heard many pitches. I had scripts sent to me and guys working on things. I was even trying to figure a way to crack a code on it. After I did my Sweep the Leg music video, it was received so well, I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to play me trapped as Johnny living in a trailer in the desert, and I'm going to try to find a way to do that. And, I, and Ralph was kind of involved. I was trying to crack this code. But, you know, it takes more than just a great idea. It takes um, guys, first of all, when, when Josh, John, and Hayden came to me the first time to pitch me the show, um, and I knew Josh because I did Hot Tub Time Machine that he wrote, and I knew John and Hayden. Uh, so, uh, that, but anyway, I knew the guys. And... Um, after they pitched me Cobra Kai, which is what we know is today Cobra Kai, and I heard it for the first time going, wait, what? Um, but they, I, they, I said, you can't just do this. You have to have, oh, no, it's IP. It's intellectual property. And they already had Sony that was behind it. They signed off on it. And Jerry Weintraub, a producer of Karate Kids Estate, signed off on it. And Overbrook Entertainment, who did the, the other Karate Kid, the next Karate Kid, or no, the Karate Kid with... Uh, Whatever. So anyway, they had all the ducks in a row and all the studio people behind it. So it would be almost impossible for somebody to do this. It'd be like, you know, like I'm going to write, um, you know, I'm going to pitch Mark Hamill a new Star Wars movie, right? You know, it's a lot of red tape to get that to happen. So um, these guys had all that red tape behind them. So I said, this could actually really happen. Um, so there was a lot of fun ideas along the way. Stuff. Um, it wasn't about turning them down. It's just... Um, yeah, I was turning them down, and also they didn't have the rights to do it, you know, so, anyway. Uh, Ralph, I think, got most of the scripts because they would always come, you know, people come to you and say, well, we have, a, we have a, a wonderful script that's a combination of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and Lethal Weapon, and we want you to work on it with uh, another karate star, you know, and um, it, it always happens, and you, you, you do one hit, and then all of a sudden, it's unfortunate that you get pigeonholed in, in Hollywood where you do one role and it's a successful movie, so then all of a sudden that's the only thing you can do. You know, be a wise ass like he was and, you know, back to school, a wise ass like I, I was in Karate Kid. And then they think, well, that's all you can do. You can't do anything else, you know? And so you look for something else all the time. And if you can find it, great, you know? Well, thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you. Thank you all. It's good to have you back. Cobra thank Kai, you. give it up. Hey, just a reminder that this panel recording was sponsored by 80stees.com, and you can get 30% off by using coupon code FSCobraKai. Check out their amazing fandom apparel today. Visit 80stees.com now. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.